Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about how to fade those pesky age spots. Many people refer to these as liver spots, and they start appearing in your 30s on sun exposed areas of the body like the face, the upper chest, the forearms, and the backs of the hands. The primary driver of these age spots is lifetime exposure to ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Age spots are due to a clone of melanocytes, which are the cells in the skin that make pigment. Uh, a clone forms that is overactive. Another type of age spot that also starts arising during this period of time is something called a seborrheic keratosis. Now this can happen either within a sunspot or outside of a sunspot. And it's a little bit different. Unlike sunspots, it actually sits on the top of the skin and starts out flat. It's known as a macular seborrheic keratosis. And with time, it can become raised. Uh, but if you, if you look at that spot, inside lighting you will see that it is that it is in fact raised up above the level of your skin whereas a sunspot is going to be you know flush with the skin is, is you know within the skin itself while you may consider age spots a cosmetic issue be aware that the more age spots that you have especially if you start developing a lot of them in your 30s it is a marker of the extent of sun damage that you have and the more sun damage you have the greater your risk for skin cancers. So if you have a lot of these age spots, especially if you start having noticing a lot of them in your 30s, it is a good idea to see a board certified dermatologist and have a skin check, especially if you have a personal or family history of skin cancers, then you definitely wanna make sure you are checking in with them to make sure that nothing is changing in a worrisome fashion. But by and large, suffice it to say, these lesions are completely benign, meaning not cancerous, not dangerous, they don't go on to form skin cancers, although they may be a risk factor for making skin cancers, they themselves don't go on to, to turn into skin cancer. Uh, if you see a dermatologist, a very easy treatment for these is something called cryotherapy, which is basically liquid nitrogen. I'm a fan of this treatment because it's very affordable. The way it works is the liquid nitrogen is super cold and it selectively destroys that clone of abnormal melanocytes that's producing the brown spot. If you've ever had liquid nitrogen treatment, it's uncomfortable, uh, but the discomfort is very short lasting, it's very temporary, and the recovery is very quick. After you know the following day, the lesion typically crusts over, maybe a little red, a little tender, but it heals very quickly. Cryotherapy is advantageous because it's inexpensive, not only for you, the patient, but also for the dermatologist to have on hand. I mean, we use it for so many things and it's a very inexpensive treatment modality. It also allows for the treatment of numerous lesions uh, in a short amount of time with a quick recovery. There is a risk, however, of scarring and actual hypopigmentation, meaning lightening, if the treatment is done too aggressively. So I encourage you to see a board certified dermatologist for this treatment uh, because we have the most training and experience using it for age spots. Number two treatment that can be advantageous, especially if you have a lot, is going to be a TCA peel, trichloroacetic acid. I have a video all about this peel and uh, you know what it's used for, how it's done, what to expect. It's been around since like 1926. It's something we use a fair amount in dermatology. The way it works is the reagent trichloroacetic acid precipitates proteins causing selective destruction. So this is a good treatment, not only for the sunspots, but also for kind of smoothing out and getting rid of some of those seborrheic keratoses that also might be lingering in there. Once it precipitates the proteins of those skin lesions, they necrose or die and then slough off. So what you can expect with this treatment is that the following day, you're gonna have some crusting and again, a little bit of tenderness. But again, similar to cryotherapy, it's a pretty quick recovery time. The next treatment is a lot more expensive for both you and the dermatologist, and that is lasers. Laser treatments are really fantastic because they allow uh, selective destruction of lesions based on targeting of specific problematic cells. And in the case of age spots, it's going to be that clone of abnormal melanocytes. 
Uh, this is known as selective photothermolysis. The reason laser treatments are so expensive is because lasers are expensive for the dermatology practice to buy and maintain and, and keep up. So there's a large overhead and that's why they are expensive, but they are a very excellent treatment for sunspots, age spots, solar keratoses, seborrheic keratoses. They're nice because they selectively kill off the clone of cells that makes that pigment so that it won't come back. See, if you don't kill off that clone, then you, you can fade the pigment, you can fade the discoloration, but without killing off the clone, that spot's just gonna come right back as soon as you go out in the sun. With lasers, you wanna be very careful because you can end up damaging the surrounding tissues if the wrong settings are used, the wrong laser is used, or the wrong pulse duration is used. This is especially risky in deeper skin tones. Another type of light-based device that's not technically a laser, but also is effective for the treatment of age spots is intense pulse light or IPL. Another laser-based device is something called Fraxel or fractional resurfacing laser. You've probably heard of it. It creates little injury zones within the skin that stimulate healing and recovery and can even out skin tone. So these things that I've discussed with you guys up until this point, these are things that you can talk to your dermatologist about, see which treatments are right for you, um, and just determine, go from there as to what's going to be the best option for you. You may be wondering about skin lightening creams, uh, bleaching creams. Uh, do these work? Short answer is no, because they don't get rid of that clone. They can lighten them though, specifically hydroquinone, which actually is now no longer going to be available over the counter. But anyways, hydroquinone can you know be prescribed as a topical bleaching agent. I have a lot of videos on hydroquinone. But hydroquinone certainly can lighten age spots. However, as soon as you go out in the sun, you will have them you know return. So it's not a cure for the age spots, it merely just lightens them. In many cases, many dermatologists will also prescribe hydroquinone in advance of some of these other treatments that I've mentioned, namely lasers, um, and prescribe the hydroquinone to be used even afterwards to reduce the chances of any post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. But to be clear, hydroquinone is not going to get rid of that clone of cells so hydroquinone alone is not gonna be the answer. But it certainly is an option for improving the appearance of age spots. And when used in conjunction with some of these other things, you can get some pretty nice results. Now remember, hydroquinone, you can't use it indefinitely because there is a risk of skin bleaching and or rebound worsening of the hyperpigmentation. And remember, in this case with the age spots, it's not getting rid of that clone. So you do have some risk where the neighboring skin cells, the neighboring melanocytes that are otherwise normal, they're seeing that and they can you know, kind of rebel and you end up getting rebound worsening of hyperpigmentation. Hydroquinone also can be incredibly irritating and anything that causes irritation in the skin puts people at risk for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. The next topical, however, that um, I think is worth definitely considering when it comes to fading the appearance of age spots is <laughs> a retinoid, everyone's favorite ingredient. Retinoids like prescription tretinoin and even over-the-counter adapalene, they can definitely fade the appearance of age spots, lighten them. Again, like hydroquinone, these are not actually going to remove that clone of abnormal cells. So when you go out in the sun and have UV exposure, it's going to return, but these certainly can help lighten. Adapalene, you can buy over the counter, it's Differin gel or La Roche-Posay has an Adapalene gel. There's even a CVS generic version, all the same ingredient. The Adapalene has been shown to lighten the appearance of uh, age spots. So definitely don't sleep on Adapalene. Uh, it, it certainly can help or, you know, see your dermatologist and get a prescription for tretinoin or even tazeratine, which is kind of related to, it's, it's in the same generation as adapalene as far as retinoid development. I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, but tazeratine is also another option for fading the appearance of age spots. And last but certainly not least, uh, you guys know it coming from me, probably single-handedly one of the most important things you can do starting today if you're not already doing it is to protect your skin from the sun. Sun is a primary driver of age spots. And while age spots are primarily a cosmetic concern, they are a marker of sun damage. And that sun damage is a risk factor for skin cancers. And also 
is a risk factor for just aging of the skin and impaired skin function long term. As I always emphasize in my videos, I take the approach of preserving function over form, but a benefit of doing that is the cosmetic benefit and that the skin looks better when it's healthier. But the goal, in my opinion, should always be preserving for function over form <laughs> uh, because your skin does a lot for you. You know, it protects you from irritating things, uh, keeps water in. I mean, it's a really, it meets the largest organ. So there you go. Um, so taking care of it, you know, it, it has cosmetic benefits, but the goal should be function over form. When it comes to protecting your skin from the sun and uh, trying to prevent and improve the appearance of existing age spots, you have got to protect your skin, not only from the burning rays, UVB, but you really need to be protecting your skin from longer wavelength wavelength ultraviolet radiation, namely UVA. So to prevent these age spots, you really need good protection against long wavelength ultraviolet radiation. As a reminder, that is UVA, and that comes through window glass. So you need to be wearing sunscreen every day, including when you are inside, because that UVA that comes through window glass, it penetrates very deeply into the skin and is responsible for damaging those melanocytes, leading to sunspots, age spots, and also putting you at risk for skin cancers like melanoma. Now, when it comes to selecting a sunscreen to protect against these wavelengths, you wanna make sure that you are choosing a sunscreen that either has a zinc oxide in it or has avabenzone in it. And I'm speaking to my US audience here because outside of the US, sunscreens have other filters that they can use, that manufacturers can use, that will also protect against those uh, long wave UVA wavelengths. Things like Tinosorb, Mexoril, um, Uvenol A+. So those of you outside of the US, you have more options available to you. But for sunscreens here in the States, it needs to either have zinc oxide or avabenzone. And the reason for this is they, they will provide protection against uh, 400 nanometer uh, wavelengths of uh, long wavelength UVA that is what is responsible for this. A lot of makeup will have titanium dioxide. It won't have zinc and it won't have avabenzone. So you've got, you know, this is one reason why a lot of times you can run into trouble if you just rely on your makeup with sunscreen. So a lot of times the makeup uh, our BB creams or CC creams, they don't have either zinc or avabenzone. So you're not getting that, that long wavelength protection. And those are the, again, those are the rays that come through window glass and are you know, driving these age spots as well as putting you at risk for skin cancers. Uh, titanium dioxide, which is what's gonna be you know, a lot of times in makeup, it only protects up to 360 nanometers as opposed to 400. So you really need either zinc or avabenzone to reiterate. Um, however, again, never just rely on sunscreen as your only sun protection modality, namely when you are outside or traversing from indoors to outdoors, riding in your car. Always have other modalities on board because as you guys have learned from my videos, there are a lot of limitations to sunscreen. It is something that helps, but it is not you know, the end all be all suit of armor. You also have to wear long sleeves, Driving gloves, I'm a huge fan of. You guys see me wear in my uh, videos, especially for those sunspots on the back of the hands. Yeah, wearing gloves is really a great option for the backs of your hands in particular. See, the hands, they see a lot of sun exposure and the skin there is thin to begin with. And the hands are exposed to a lot of environmental stressors just through handling different things, coming in contact with detergents, that strip away the moisture barrier, lead to more water loss, more irritation. So your hands will age a lot more quickly than even your face. Um, so in my opinion, the gloves are just a really nice thing to have. I will link mine down below. I wear mine all the time. And you know, one of the limitations of sunscreen, while it's super important, is that it does rub off. And you can imagine on your hands, that's definitely going to be even more so the case. So that's why I like to wear those when I'm outside or in the car, um, but I also wear sunscreen as well. <laughs> Long sleeves and a hat. The broader the brim of a hat, the better. A baseball hat, unfortunately, is not good enough because it's not gonna cover your ears, the sides of your face. That's really where a lot of sun, sunspots show up. Some people, you know, not only, baseball hats don't, don't cover there, and a lot of times people don't carry their sunscreen out to 
to the lateral part of the face. So definitely make sure you're covering all surface areas with the sunscreen. And when you get a hat, make sure it has a broad brim that goes all the way around. The broader the brim, the better. In the description box, I'm gonna list down below some hats that I have and like to wear um, and uh, that I recommend. So that's another helpful option. Plus the nice thing about a hat is it protects your scalp as well. While you may not be concerned with the cosmetic aspect of the scalp, although men are, men who have male pattern baldness, they will have a lot of age spots on the top of their head. Um, and wearing sunscreen and hats is one way to protect against those forming. Um, so yeah, I mean, protect your scalp is what I'm getting at. Another reason beyond the cosmetics to protect your skin from the sun is that if you do develop a skin cancer um, and the surgeon goes in to cut it out, they have to correct that defect that they have left on your face. And in order to do that, they borrow skin from the neighboring area and you know move it in to cover the defect. The burden of sun damage that you have in the neighboring areas is definitely going to impact how well you heal from those procedures. That is yet another reason. Always carry the sunscreen out, you know, and cover, cover your ears. This area back here is really where uh, the surgeon is gonna borrow tissue from, in many cases, to correct the defect they've created by cutting out the skin cancer. The healthier that skin is, the better the outcome is going to be um, in terms of healing. And I know that's a very distant, far-reaching goal. <laughs> Um, and hopefully you don't have, ever have to have a skin cancer cut out, but the outcome will be a lot better as far as healing if you don't have a lot of sun damage in that area. That's what I'm getting at. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful as far as covering the different types of treatments uh, and prevention of age spots, but you guys, there's nothing wrong with age spots. However, I do just wanna emphasize that it's more about preserving function rather than form. And that is why I'm such an advocate of sunscreen and sun protective clothing is because it keeps your skin healthy long term so that when you get into your 70s, 80s and 90s, because let's face it, people are living much longer these days. Uh, you want your skin to be protecting you out that long. It's really you know, going to make your quality of life much better in your wiser years. So be very proactive when it comes to protecting your skin from the sun. I always emphasize that to you guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.